Welcome everyone to uh, Society 2045 Friday Talks. My name is Jose Leal, and we host these calls, these talks with folks that are creating new movements, running new movements. And we want to learn more about what it is that you're doing and your vision of the future. And today's special guest is Agustin Jimenez from Colombia. Hopefully I pronounced that right, Agustin. Great. <laughs> And um, so we start, Augustine, with a little bit about your background. Uh, how, how are you here? What are you doing that causes you to want to be interviewed by us? I would like to start um, saying that uh, the social and the environmental crisis we're facing are issues that really matter to me. Uh, these issues have led me to get involved in community building and organizational transformation. Besides, besides that, it, I think that it, were, it is worth to mention that I have been entrepreneur for almost 30 years and um, a business consultant for more than 20 years. I am co-founder of a Colombian consultancy of yeah Colombian boutique consultancy firm named Kawa uh, whose area of expertise are strategy culture transformation and management innovation and uh, actually for a long time the field of uh, human development has been a topic that of deep interest for me and uh, I find fascinating the areas of human and societal change. And I hope that, that this background explains the reason why I have written a book named uh, or titled Organizaciones Brillantes, Bright Organizations in English, uh, which is a calling to unleash the transformative power of organizations. Uh, and it also clarifies why I'm closely involved in the forming and the development of holistic intentional communities. Well, it seems to me that you've touched on all of the points that we've been talking about here uh, for a very long time. So uh, it sounds like we're gonna have a really good conversation. So welcome and thank you for, for giving us that background. So. The first question we always ask is, what's your vision of the future? Um, I'd like to ask it in a way that maybe gets us into a little bit more um, felt sense of what people actually experience in 2045. In your mind, how does the work you're doing, the work that others are doing, um, change society from the way people live today to the way that we will live in uh, 2045. Okay, thank you. I I try to to express it in a in a short text that I would like to to read. Uh, I dream of a future for humanity in harmony with nature. In 2045, lots of people will abandon the cities, tired of alienation caused by the big city way of life, and they will have moved to the countryside, seeking a more meaningful, healthier, and quieter life in contact with nature. They will be leading small, autonomous, holistic, intentional communities that will be interconnected between them, building life parks. I would like to mention that life parks and holistic uh, intentional communities are terms coined by Grupo Colama. Grupo Colama is a, a, a company that is developing this kind of uh, communities here in Colombia, around the, the country, but well, well, they want to do it around the country. But uh, now we're, we're uh, uh, developing the first one of these intentional, holistic intentional communities. And this, uh, the idea is, uh, yeah, to be, to have an, uh, 
a network of these kind of communities that uh, that make a big note or big notes. Uh, yeah. And okay. Hope I. Uh, besides that, holistic. In my view, the the holistic fulfillment, interdependence, well-being, respect, and care for nature, systems and complex thinking will be pillars of this community's culture. And nonviolent communication, solidarity, economy, permaculture, and sociocracy are examples of the fundamental practices that will lead the, co the coexistence in these spaces. Technology will be used to facilitate hard farm labor, house building, governance, trade, and learning, to name a few aspects in which it could be used. That's awesome. So let me ask you a question. I want to dig deeper in that because you and, touched and on so me, much there. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Before you go on, you've okay. already touched on so much and I'm going to lose track of what it is that, that you touched on. So you've got, you've got people moving away from cities into rural areas coming together in that i hear autonomous autonomous, that, autonomous communities and that these organ, these groups will be working together through some of the things that you've just talked about give me give me a sense of what are people doing in in those communities if if people are moving from the city and they're moving into these smaller communities what what's their lives look like uh, you, you've described how they sort of are, are going to happen uh what what new technologies were, are emerging that are happening well what what's what are they doing what's their livelihoods how, how does that change I what I what I hope to see is people more more connected with uh, themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, having productive lives, but not that their lives are centered in this productive dimension of life. More more with a very yeah, more with a balance with this uh, productive or survival dimension with the transcendence, transcendent dimension of, of life. Uh, I think I, I explained uh, this, uh, this uh, balance with a metaphor. I, I think that the that life is like, uh, you, can, uh, you can see it like, uh, like a bicycle, you know? And I would like to, to ask you, what is the, the, the function of the, of the front uh, wheel of a oh. bicycle? Hmm? Typically it's direction. Direction. And the rear wheel? To uh, motivation. Yeah, to... To move. To move, you know? And I think that life is almost the same. You need uh, a will that guides you, that should be uh, ideally your life purpose. And, but you have to, to have a, to care of your survival. You know? This is the rear, the rear uh, will. So you have to, to, well, it is in, it is important to have a productive life, mm -hmm. and this balance. And, and uh, I, I, I see, or what I see to nowadays is that we are only in the rear wheel, pulling a lot, a lot like a hamster, but we are not going anywhere. At least not where we want to go. Okay. <laughs> So uh, thank and you for that. With a lot of effort, no? It, making a lot of effort and not getting where we want to be, exactly. So 
I, I really like the idea of those those separate communities. We've heard from many of our guests a, a similar vision of, of, of how we come together, and that we come together in a way that is um, self-regulated, right? And you you talked about some of the, the ways that we do that. You mentioned technology as a part of that process. Um, how big a role do you think technology plays, not only in the in the driving part, the back wheel, which you descri described yeah. as how we do construction, how we do farming, so on and so forth, but uh, what about in the front wheel? How does how does technology uh, help us in the front wheel? Do you think that comes to, to bear? Mm. Maybe it could help to to make easier the way we learn, the way we learn to be better human beings. Uh, but I think that it will be, it, it, technology would have a big role for the rear wheel, but not for the front wheel. So you, you think that it's predominantly in the back wheel scenario? Well, that'll be interesting. I, I want to hear what Anthem thinks about that that issue when we uh, when we dig deeper in a little bit. Um, okay, so so let me ask you a question about this the vision. I cut you off. I want to make sure that you have a chance to to say if you had some more details that you'd like to express. Is there some more? You had written some more. Did you did you want uh, to? Okay. Uh just uh, just uh, another sentence that is to reinforce this vision. I hope to see the inner development goals as part of the educational curriculum worldwide. And the and for this reason, I say that technology in this particular field could help a lot because this. Uh, uh, this inner develop development goals have uh, has five categories, and I think that we that uh, we need to have we need new ways to learn in order to to incorporate uh, these new capabilities or competences or skills i don't yeah to to live in a different way in the future when um when you you're talking about these five what what are the five i'm i'm new with the inner development goals it's it's a it's very the the launch of the or the kick uh, the kickstart the kickoff of the of of uh, the inner development goals is uh, the next uh, 29th of april in sweden and let me one second maybe i can i can share my my screen and i can show you something sure being there is a relationship to solve thinking cognitive cogni cognitive skills relating caring for others in the world collaborating social skills and acting driving change and <laughs> each one has the the some uh, competences i uh I, I laugh because they're almost the perfect match to radical purpose uh, five dimensions. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Um, the, the just not to promote anything here, but just to 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 tell you what I mean, it is being, meaning, impacting, becoming, and belonging. Okay. Uh, so uh, I, I see very, very much alignment in, in those, which is uh, yeah, rather interesting, sure. very interesting. Well, thank you for sharing that, uh, Augustine. Um, so 
the work that you're doing, I mean, obviously you've identified this is one of the things that that is that is going to get us to that vision. The work that you're doing in this space, what do you think is going to keep us from from getting there? Mm. What might be a roadblock? The ruling mental mode. Say that again. The ruling mental mode. Okay. Just, this is a, a, a huge barrier. Right. The way we think about the world today is what's going to prevent us from making a new world. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, uh, it, and it is very, very difficult to change this, this, is, uh, this mental mode because uh, uh, mm, it's like uh, mental modes is, uh, are, uh, are the way we explain reality. In one way or another, you know. So if we if we leave the mental mode, we are uh, grasped. We're, we're grasped. So it, it is like uh, uh, feeling uh, in the in the very yeah in the uncertainty. You no, know? it's very it's very it's a uh, the. I don't know how to. It is very risky to mm -hmm. leave right. your mental your mental mode. And the problem is that you man, most of the time you are not aware of your own mental mode. No. So this uh, to trying to change it uh, is a, a huge uh, effort. And you mentioned some of the things that you think are going to contribute to that vision. Um, you want to mention if, any other things that you think are going to contribute to that to that vision? Mm. No, no, I think that it is uh, it is what I think. Of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I want to, I'd like to invite everyone else to join in because one of the things that I think um, I'm hearing today in, in our conversation, Augustine, is, is this, um, this sense that it isn't just about, you know, a handful of things that need to change, but that there's this fundamental change that needs to happen, what you've just described about the mental model. And that fundamental change starts to feel to me like we can't do it as one group. We can't do it as, as one movement. That the only way we can do this is through massive global efforts to change that mental model. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I wonder how much the team here that is on this call agrees with that and, and wants to, um, to dig a little deeper into that. So I'm going to ask uh, that Ken go ahead and start um, that questioning. Well, I have a slightly different question, but um... yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very curious from your perspective, Augustine, um, how do you see the indigenous world and the modern world blending together to create this new world? Um, what I'm hearing from you is, you know, this need to change our mental models. Uh, I'm reading a book called Sand Talk, How Indigenous Thinking Can Save the World. And um, there's some really remarkable stuff in there that, you know, uh, from the Aboriginal point of view, the original sin is... Um, placing yourself above other people or above the earth. And every, all of our problems flow from that. And I think there are a lot of, um, uh, a lot of very useful um, 
mental models from the indigenous world that have been discarded by the modern world that could be integrated. And I just, I'm curious if you have any thoughts on that. And uh, especially because you're in, in um, a different part of the world where I think there's a, a larger indigenous population than we have here in the States or at least more influence there. So, and I've heard about the eagle and the condor um, prophecy. So do you have any, any thoughts on that you'd like to share? Mm, I think that we have uh, a lot, a lot to to learn from them, from this kind of indigenous uh, uh, mental mode, because they they see the nature as the as the model. You know? Nature is not to to exploit it; is to carry it. And this is a, a, a hundred and eighty degree uh, shift you know? mm -hmm. because uh, we in the modern world modern world <laughs> see uh, nature as something to exploit and to um, discard so uh, if you and we we it is difficult we don't know how to care what you see is that most people doesn't they don't know well how to care of themselves and what you and if, if you don't care yourself you can't love yourself and if you can't care and love yourself you can't care and love others and your in the and the environment around you mm -hmm. you know and this is this is a, a huge challenge I mean you. Thank you, Augustine. As beings, we need to have communication systems like our nervous system and things like that. Yeah, technology maybe could be the, the nervous system, but not a technology that is that is controlled by the ruling power. Distributed technology. Yeah, like blockchain, <laughs> or something like this. In order for us to generate a different result, then we fundamentally have to do us differently, presumably better, as creators and contributors. That old thing about you can't, you can't use old tricks and expect to produce a different result. Part of the question around SDGs and IDGs as constructs, mm -hmm. I don't think indigenous people have those. They have sensing, feeling, knowing in relation to present moment, energetic, constantly changing reality around them, being in relationship with that on a being level. So my question is, do we sort of have to start there with how do we do us on a being level, you know, with the basics, like how do we talk to each other? How do we co-create together from a fundamentally different place? before you get to the fancy plans and the constructs and the intellectual abstractions and all of the other I, stuff. I, I think that the, the, the change starts in the essence of the daily life. If we, if we learn how to communicate in a different way, in a nonviolent way, if we learn how to, to take decisions collectively in a, in a, in a, in a peaceful way, and uh, if we learn uh, empathy, real, real empathy, uh, if we learn to trust you know, and how to to, to build a context of trust, uh, maybe, and it is part of the, of the daily life. It is not a, a, a constant. You know? So I think that the things that uh, like inner development goals can, can guide us uh, to this, uh, to, to the essential or fundamental uh, competences that we need to develop in order to change this uh, daily life essence. 
but but the 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 challenge is how to work this inner this how to work this inner world in an effective way you no know? because we always we we what we we have what we learn is always about the outside world and this is the way we the the only way we know to learn but the, okay maybe maybe it's not the only way but it's the the predominant way that we know right so we we have to maybe the the question is i don't know if i i will say it correctly but is learn how learn to learn No, how we learn to learn in a different way. Thank you for your thoughts, um, Augustine. I think I heard you say earlier that uh, business organizations can be great, great places for change. And I, I agree with you, all right? And I agree with everything you've said so far. And I also think and the way I've been articulating it is we need to conquer inner space. We've conquered outer space. <laughs> and I don't mean, I don't mean, you know, the stars, I mean just outer space, the territory, planet Earth. But we need to conquer inner space. And this keeps coming up of late. I haven't been able to um, um, come up with a method to do that in big quantities, for want of a better way to say, <laughs> how do we, how do, how, you know, making a massive shift in how people think their worldview and, and how they engage with each other. The only thoughts that I've had is, you know, I look at examples, historic examples, and I see Israel and China, two authoritarian regimes that were able to create great change in a thought period, of, in a short period of time. Do you have any thoughts about how we might leverage what we know needs to happen? And I also think we know a lot about how to make it happen, but how do we do that on a massive scale? I don't know. This is a, a, <laughs> a very good question because uh, we have a, 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 the, the science says that we have a, more more or less 10 years to change things or we are facing extinction and the politicians are doing the same thing or are doing a, a small are, are uh, putting small patches and okay we have the 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 deadline just around the corner. Yeah, they're, they are still thinking that it is that doing the same uh, will guide us to our different result. And this is craziness. No? And, and I don't know how to change it because it is, they are maybe, there are so greedy, these greedy interests and uh, the uh, mm, uh, this thirst of power, this uh, I don't know narcissism that, that that is in the in the roots of of these uh, persons that I, I I don't understand it. Yeah. So uh, my my question is okay. We are at the uh, uh, facing extinction and. They're saying, okay, just put gas and go ahead. It's incredible. Thank you. It's refreshing, uh, Agustin, to, to hear someone say, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All too often we think that the ideas we have are the ones that are gonna make the difference, but uh, it's not our ideas uh, individually, it's our collective ideas. Somehow we need to come together. Yeah, we need collective intelligence to solve it. Exactly.
Yeah. Is it a male or female collective intelligence? I, I don't know. I once asked a Spanish speaking friend why um, preguntas was uh, feminine. He said, because they're pregnant with possibility. Questions are pregnant with possibility. Yeah. Oh, great. Augustine, you, you began with something I really loved. You said, I dream of a world. And I just, you're the first person I've heard on this call say, I dream of a world. It was like, I visualize this. And it's like, I, I love this. I dream of a world. And I, I would like you to, I would like you to continue to dream of that world specifically for, because you mentioned productive lives. And I, I'm not sure that productive is the right word. I'm looking more for meaning, you know. There's a minimum amount of productivity that needs to be done to take care of human needs. And then there's the, the huge amount of work to be done to create meaning in people's lives. Yeah. We know that young men need meaningful places in the world and meaningful work, which may or may not be, quote, productive for society. But, you know, if young men are not attended to, they will burn down the village to get its attention. So what is your dream for young men coming up in the future? For young men or for young people? Young men in particular, because they're de young women, certainly, but young men, there's a reason that the indigenous cultures have initiation rights. They are, they are to create terror in the heart that says, whoa, the world is a really dangerous place and I need my community around me to support me and I have to be humble because there's so many forces out there that could overwhelm me. And without that, young men feel that they are enormously powerful because they can channel rage and, and anger and, and not nonviolent communication, but violent communication. And without that, that, that initiation right, they often do, as we see all around us today. So to me, that's one piece from the indigenous world that's missing that needs to be reintegrated is how do we create, you know, meaningful rights of, okay, you're now a man, the hormones are flowing. You need to, to have a different place in the world. And we recognize you as different. When you're initiated, you leave a boy and you come back a man and your name changes. People now call you differently. They recognize the change you've gone through. So I'm curious if you have thoughts about, you know, what you're dreaming for young men along those lines. Okay. I think that Product, that, that being productive is part of this meaningful life, but it's a part, just a part. The, it, it, it maybe is that the, it, is, it should be a smaller part of the, of the equation. But I think that we, we need a new masculinity, a new way to, to, to understand our role as men in the world. And, and it compels a, a new masculinity, I think so. And this new masculinity is, uh, is uh, connected with an inner work to find who really you are and, and, and which is your purpose. We, we need more spiritual life around us. I don't mean a religious life. I mean a spiritual life. When you leave that this spirituality uh, permeates your being, this is a way to, to, to see the, the world in, in a very different way. We need more, more meditation in the, in the classrooms. We need more spiritual practices in the classrooms. We need more existential questions in the classroom. Yeah, thank you for that. Anthem wrote about um, protocols on, on the chat. And, uh, and it led me to think about um, what, what everything you've just said, Augustine, and, and what uh, Stuart said a minute ago about the inner world, that part of this mental model is the set of protocols that we use to communicate with each other, that we use to see each other. And those social protocols about who we are and about one another and what, what is it that we do and why do we do it, that's really what we have to rebuild is those protocols, the way we actually interact with one another is, is part of that big question. And so I, I wonder, are protocols in your mind or, or just simply the way that we interact with each other? I think that the way we 
interact with each other changes when the way we interact with ourselves changes. If we don't, if we can't try ourselves with love and compassion, we can't give it to the world. And uh, I, there is a, a saying that, that says that you can give what you don't have. Is there any doubt in your mind that this transformation has to start with an inner world issue? It's not, it's not an external yeah. thing. It's a transformation of the inner space. It, and this is the challenge because most of the uh, of the efforts are trying to change the outer space and this is the in my in my humble opinion this is uh, the wrong way yeah i just wanted to to loop to loop back because we never kind of drilled down on it uh, augustine do you or or what do you see as a way that 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 business organizations can be a great vehicle for change. I mean, I, we talked a little bit about uh, the changes that need to happen internally. And, and do you see ways in which business can, can uh, contribute to that? Businesses are the second largest institution in the world of the family. There are around 200 million businesses worldwide. And if you add to that NGOs and governmental organizations, the impact of these kinds of organizations could be huge, no? And what I have seen is that the, the organizations that with a deep work in human development with their workforce, no? And, the, and, the, and this is very important because I think that when when uh, an entrepreneur says, "Okay, we're going to change," and uh, this is a uh, and this initiative uh, is uh, uh, and uh, and supports this initiative with uh, a real uh, uh, belief in it, they uh, the the benefits of it. Uh, spreads around the, the the organization because when when uh, an employee uh, learn how to communicate in a better way it uh, it would uh, uh, or, or for sure it will uh, impact uh, their their uh, its life with uh, with with his family no, and maybe with uh, with uh, his friends, and this yeah. is like a, a wave when you throw a a stone in the water in a pond in a pond. This it's like the the waves that that are rippling when, out. When you when you respect really human dignity everything changes. Augustine, thank you so much for joining us today, for sharing with us um, your vision, your dream, uh, and, uh, and for sharing with us not only what you see, but very clearly describing the fact that you understand that to get there, we've got a lot of steps to take. And um, and that those steps um, need to be taken in a certain order in order for us to be able to do the, the work that needs to be done. So thank you very much for, uh, for being here with us and hopefully you will come back and continue to be part of Society 2045, as well as uh, possibly invite others to do an interview with possibly in Spanish so that uh, we can continue to grow the community into other um, parts of the world to have this conversation. We think this is a very important conversation to be had and one that needs to be shared with the world. So it's not about us doing it, but uh, continuing this conversation uh, beyond this uh, Friday talks. 
Okay, great. Thank you for the invitation. I enjoy it a, a lot and uh, very grateful. Thank you.